G'day, it's Heath here from PickingLessons.com. This is such a beautiful tune, O'Carolyn's Draft, another great O'Carolyn tune, of course. Uh, we've got a really wonderful melody in the key of G here, and this guitar fingerstyle arrangement just works so nicely, such a beautiful melody. We have two sections, A and B, key of G. Uh, we're in 4-4 four, four time. Now, we're gonna take a look at part A here in a moment in this video, but if you head to pickandlessons.com, you were to grab yourself a copy of the complete arrangement. Part A is quite short, we've only got A measures that repeat, so I'm gonna do that in a moment. Part B is much longer, uh, and then that has a repeat on it as well. So pickandlessons.com, we'll break down part B in the member section, but you can grab yourself a copy of the tablature separately as well. Now let's break down part A of this tune. Let's have a look at it slowly, and then we'll have a look at the techniques and have a look at the movement of the melody. One, Two, Okay, so there was part A. Let's break it down. Now, it's only a slow tune. We're in the key of G and we have our finger style arrangement. Essentially, what we're doing is capturing the melody and supporting it with some uh, bass notes from our chords, different inversions and whatnot. Uh, so in 4-4 four, four time, our pickup note is on beat four. One, two, three, four, and. So that pickup note, four, and. Now, we've got some challenging positions to work on and we hit one of them straight away. This opening section here. We've got this third finger on G, so there's a G chord position with a hammer on to that A to the C. And that's why we're playing in this sort of open position right now. So third finger, second finger first. Thumb, of course, on the bass note, and then melody-wise, just alternate between two fingers. You can use your index and middle. I tend to focus more on in, uh, middle and ring with a little bit of index, um, but that doesn't really matter. The melody is quite straightforward in the way we play it. Just the left hand, though, this is the challenge. The second position here, we have this second finger on the F sharp, our little finger on the D. Now, the reason for that is what's sort of happening next. And then it's actually what's happening in the second bar that kind of drives us to use these fingers in, in measure one. So we've got this second finger on F sharp, little finger on the D. Hammer onto the third. I'd suggest leaving that there as our little finger comes back to the D and then we shift to the G. So this is our hand position to kick us off. That's really important to keep us Basically to keep us holding on to notes as long as we can. We don't want to cut notes short, so we don't want to go and, and cut those bass notes out. We want, the whole, we want to hold on to them. Holding on to them is hard. If you don't have the right fingers, it's even harder than we do. This gets us into this position here, the G with B. We get our second finger, little finger there. So this is really crucial, these left hand positions. So important fingerings there certainly is in the tablature. So keep an eye out for that. Spend some time on those two measures. That's a hard starting point. It is only a slow tune, but it is quite advanced to play. So bear that in mind. Uh, up next, the measure three. Nice hand position there, just the C chord to the G with the B. Again, letting the notes sort of ring out for as long as possible is really nice until we change positions. Measure four. One thing to, to mention before we move on about measure three, we've played a series of sort of eighth notes to get us there. Measure three is quarter notes, so don't rush those. Coming out of measure two. Really watch that we hit those quarter notes and we're holding those for their full length. Let's move on. Measure five kicks us off in the same way. Same fingering, but here in measure six, we transition to uh, an E minor, different melody, and a position change for the A7. So we have the E minor, A7, 
seven position change. There's our G, making it an A7. Slide for the D. So we're back into that second position now. And finishing off with the D. At this point we do repeat and we'll go through this A part two times. So left hand fingering is really important. We choose our fingering based on pretty much what's happening next. So what's happening next will really dictate our choice. It's really uh, evident in measure one through to measure two. That's really important. And there are other moments in the tune and particularly in part B as well. So left hand fingering, uh, right hand pretty straightforward, just alternate between a couple of fingers for the melody, that's okay, and then thumb of course plays that um, bottom note. You could just work on the melody separately if you wish to begin with, then bring in the, the, the low notes, but one of the things you really gotta capture is the positioning of your left hand and the fingers, so that's kinda nice just to do it at the same time. This is a hard tune, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an advanced finger style arrangement, so it is a tricky one to play, so take your time with it. So there's part A, pickandlessons.com. We're gonna break down part B. We're gonna look at the positions like we did in this section. We'll look at the melody. We'll look at what's going on there. It's a longer, it's sort of twice as long before we repeat. So it's, a, it's much more that we need to learn. We're gonna break that down. Uh, you'll also find there the tablature, of course, and in the member section, you'll find that part B breakdown. So pickandlessons.com, I'll see you there.